Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about data visualization using ggplot. And so for those of you who have used R before and who are used to the base R plotting functions, ggplot might seem a little bit strange at first and might take some time to get used to. The reason is that ggplot changes a little bit how we think about graphics and plotting uh, in R. While base R is basically centered around types of plot like a bar plot or a scatter plot, ggplot kind of conceptualizes plots um, based on a so-called grammar of graphics. And that's also where the name ggplot is coming from, gg for grammar of graphics. So what does this grammar of graphics do? Essentially, this grammar of gra graphics describes all the necessary components in a plot, okay? And here's a visualization uh, of, this, uh, uh, of the, these different layers that are all part of any plot that you could essentially uh, uh, think about to visualize your data. The underlying layer, layer is always the, the, the data, the actual variables to be plotted. Um, on top of that layer, uh, on top of that data, um, there is a mapping uh, of aesthetics. So these are the scales onto which the data is ultimately mapped. These aesthetics are then ultimately represented in the plot and that's what we call the geometries. So these could be shapes like plot, uh, like uh, individual points or bars and things like that. And then we have facets. Facets describes the rows and uh, columns of potential subplots. So we could subdivide our plot into different areas. And then we have additional layers uh, like statistics, which are statistical models and summaries that are computed based on the data uh, coordinates, so the plotting space for the data itself. And then lastly, themes. So the, these themes describe all the kind of non-data visualization aspects, like styles and, and things like that, uh, that uh, determine um, um, the plot itself, okay? Um, so the idea behind ggplot is there's gonna be a sequence of kind of subcommands, and each of these subcommands kind of target one of these aspects. So uh, specifically what we're going to focus most on uh, is the aesthetics, so how the data maps onto specific scales and geometries. So um, as a first step, I'm going to follow uh, the code uh, in um, uh, the book R for Data Science that you're supposed to read for this week. Uh, and I'm just going to go through those examples and talk about them briefly. Uh, so the first step is, of course, we load the tidyverse uh, into R. Uh, and then uh, just for this example, we will take a look at the MPG data frame, which is also uh, um, included in the uh, tidyverse packages. Uh, and this data frame is, uh, is a data set of um, uh, car models uh, and some information about those cars. Uh, so there are different manufacturers, different models. Uh, we have different uh, engine types associated with the, those models, and we have uh, information about their fuel efficiency. And specifically in this example, we're just going to look at um, the relationship between a car's engine size, which is uh, 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 displacement, the variable, uh, right here, and uh, highway, uh, which is, oops, sorry, um, a car's fuel efficiency uh, on the highway in miles per gallon. Okay, so uh, now what do we need to do to create our first ggplot? And uh, as we go through these examples, always kind of think about these different layers of, uh, of each plot uh, uh, that are kind of included in the grammar of graphics, right? So every ggplot consists of at least one data set. Of course, we need some data to plot. We have at least one aesthetic mapping so one mapping of data onto certain scales that we want to use to visualize uh, our data, and one geometry, so some shape that ultimately visualizes this, okay? And so in this first ggplot call, uh, we have these three components. First, mpg as the data set that we're using in our ggplot call, so there's this first argument that I'm highlighting here. And then we include information about the aesthetic mapping. So the aesthetic mapping begins with AES. And then we have two mappings, uh, display uh, displacement, so the engine size is mapped onto the x-axis, uh, 
and highway, so uh, fuel efficiency, is mapped onto the y-axis. Okay, so this describes the data and the aesthetics, but it doesn't really just uh, describe uh, the layer uh, of the geometry. So how exactly we want to visualize uh, this data, and that's where now. Uh, an additional kind of sub command comes in, which is geom underscore point. So that's a geometry. Specifically, uh, we want to kind of uh, visualize the data using points. So this is going to be a basic scatter plot. Okay, and you combine these different layers, so to speak, uh, by adding them together in a ggplot call. Okay, so if we run this command, um, and I should say I noted this in my last video. Um, I uploaded uh, all the code that I'm using for uh, this video and all the other videos on our Studio Cloud. So you can directly uh, copy uh, that project uh, and you'll have the data there. Uh, you have all the packages installed and you can just run the commands and, and play around with the code as well. So this is the result. Uh, as I said, it's going to be a basic uh, scatter plot where now we have on the x axis the engine size. And on the y-axis, uh, the uh, fuel efficiency, so miles per gallon. And of course, what we see is a negative relationship. So the larger an engine, the uh, uh, smaller the fuel efficiency. So the fewer miles we can um, we can drive per gallon on average on a highway. Okay. So this is the basic structure. And as I said, we can now. In changing plots, we're not thinking about, you know, in, in base hour, we would you know, use a plot for a scatter plot or a bar plot or, or something like that, a different type of command. Uh, now what we're doing, we're just changing different aesthetics or we're changing different uh, geometries or different elements that are kind of components of a plot. So the first thing we can do is, of course, uh, we can uh, add additional mappings of data onto aesthetics, okay? So in this example, uh, all I'm doing is I'm adding an additional mapping uh, of class that was a, another variable um, that was included in the data set onto um, color. So this is going to be now a mapping of a factor variable um, onto different colors. So we're going to group these cars according to uh, according to their class. Okay, there are lots of other aesthetics uh, like the size uh, of uh, geometries, the shape uh, of the points, or uh, the line type, for example, or um, uh, whether uh, specific points are, are um, slightly transparent. Uh, that's for uh, that's the alpha uh, aesthetic. Uh, but in this example, we're just going to look at changing the color depending on class. Okay. And so this is the result. It's the same sc scatter plot, but we, what we see now is an additional legend here. And we see that there are different uh, classes of cars that are included in the data set, uh, two seaters, compact, minivan, and so on. Okay, So it's quite simple to uh, examine groupings in data frames and relationships within those groupings uh, within uh, ggplot. As I mentioned, another um, basic layer in the grammar of graphics is facets, which determine the rows and columns of subplots. Right, so if we want to add uh, facets, one thing we can do in this case, and there are, there, are, there are other similar commands, but one basic way of adding facets is this facet underscore wrap command. Okay? And so what this does is um, it basically divides the original plot that we had here into subplots according to the variable that we looked at um, uh, just in the previous plot, class. And we have an additional argument here saying that the number of rows that we want to look at uh, is two. Okay. So if we run this plot, we have the same separation of uh, observations in different car types. But now instead of coloring, we're basically just dividing the plot into different subsections, uh, into different subplots to show the relationship between car engine size and fuel efficiency. <clears throat> um, depending on the underlying data, we can also choose different geometries to visualize uh, the aesthetic mappings. So up to now, we only just used uh, geom points, so basic scatter plots. 
but we can also use other geometries that are available to us. And one example, for exa uh, one example that I'm going to look at here is geom smooth, uh, which is basically just uh, fitting, in our case, a lowest, uh, so, so kind of a uh, non-parametric um, um, uh, fit uh, in, in this data. We could think of other, um, uh, there are other fits that are available in geom smooth. We can, for example, directly kind of include a linear regression line or something like that. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to look at a lowest uh, fit. Okay, so if we add this uh, geometric, instead of the individual points of the data, what we see is here the kind of local average uh, smoothed uh, fit uh, using uh, lowest. Okay, again, on the x, x axis, we have uh, the engine size and on the y axis, uh, we have the fuel efficiency, okay? And the important point is that these layers can be combined, right? Different geometries can be combined, different facets can be combined with geometries and so on, right? And so you can think about different ways uh, of combining all these different layers and components of a plot uh, to ultimately create the visualization that, that you want to achieve, right? So in this case, if you look at this command, again, we're starting with ggplot and our data. Uh, we added an additional uh, aesthetic. Uh, now um, uh, we're mapping color, um, color to DRV. Uh, and we're adding two geometries. On the one hand, we're adding uh, points. So it's going to be a, a general uh, scatter plot. And we're adding our smooth uh, local average fit. And this is what we're going to see. So now, um, uh, oh yeah, so DRV is uh, a variable that describes whether the car is a four-wheel drive or front-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, so three different categories. Uh, we have our points, um, uh, our scatter plot, uh, now divided by in these three different categories. And we have our lowest fit that is now also divided into these three categories, okay? So we have a separate lowest fit for each of these three kind of um, 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 categories of observations, okay? And the reason why that is, is that we have specified aesthetic mappings of X, Y, and color uh, for the entire data frame that apply to both geometries, geom point and geom underscore smooth. And I'm going to talk about a different example in a second where we kind of uh, specify individual mappings for individual geometries. Um, <laughs> uh, in fact, that's the next slide, OK? So we can also specify individual aesthetics or aesthetic mappings for specific geometries, OK? So this is the same example. Uh, if you look at the code, the only thing that m changed is that the mapping of uh, the um, dry DRV um, onto color is not included in the main ggplot call, but it's no, now included in geom underscore point, OK? Um, so before I click uh, on the next slide, just think a moment about uh, how uh, this, uh, what, what your expectation would be. Uh, with changing this command just from kind of moving this argument from up here into down here uh, uh, geom underscore point. Uh, and this is what, it's lo uh, what it looks like. Um, we have our color mapping uh, that is still applicable for, uh, that is still uh, applicable for geom underscore point. So we have the points colored according to um, the DRV variable, uh, but GM smooth, our smooth average, our lowest average, um, is now uh, based on the entire uh, data set because we didn't include uh, this grouping or this color grouping in uh, the overall aesthetic mapping. Okay. Um, there are a lot of other things that we can do, additional layers that I didn't really talk about. One additional layer that I mentioned early on is statistical transformations. 
Uh, and for this, uh, we're going to look at a different uh, data set, uh, Diamonds, which is also included in the um, uh, Tidyverse or loaded with the Tidyverse package. And this is just a big data set of uh, different uh, diamonds and information about their cut, their color, clarity, and, and price. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And uh, the important thing to, to remember uh, when we think about uh, geometries is that some geometries perform default statistical transformations. Okay, so with geom underscore point, so a basic scatter plot uh, that we saw earlier, we just had the basic, you know, directly plotting the data. There was no specific data transformation. It was just an, a mapping uh, of the underlying data onto the aesthetics. Uh, and then onto the geometric shapes. When we talk about other geometries, like a bar plot, uh, ggplot performs a default statistical transformation. So if we run this command, ggplot uh, diamonds, now a different data set, uh, we only have one aesthetic mapping, uh, the cut, so the quality of the cut of the diamond uh, is mapped onto the x-axis, and then we include geom underscore bar. And this is going to create a uh, basic bar plot where we have, uh, of course, cut on our x-axis, uh, which ranges from fair, good, very good, premium, ideal. Uh, and then we have a count. Okay? And if you remember, if you go back to the data set, uh, this is not immediately plotting the, the raw data because the raw data, each observation was basically one specific diamond, but it summarized uh, the the different categories and produced uh, basically a, a, um, a bar chart of counts in each category. Okay, so what is going on? Ultimately, what happens is that geom underscore bar begins with the diamonds data set and then transforms the data uh, with by, by producing the count statistics. So basically counting the number of observations in each category. Okay, and then mapping this count onto the y-axis and um, um, using the cut, so the, the different categories, uh, to map on the x-axis, okay? Uh, this is a default uh, statistical transformation for geom bar, for bar plots, but of course, in some cases, you might want to override this mapping. So for example, if you want to display proportions instead of counts, uh, here's an example where uh, we, um, basically change the standard with this default map mapping of geom bar by including stat in parentheses prop uh, in order to get a, um, a plot of proportions. And so it's the same information, but instead of the absolute count now, we have uh, proportions on the y-axis. And there are other, way other ways. You might think of examples where your data frame uh, directly includes the counts as individual ob observations and then you don't, uh, you directly want to um, uh, plot basically the numbers that you have in uh, that that you have in the data frame itself, uh, and you can also uh, um, uh, kind of uh, override the default um, statistical transformation in GeoM bar to directly uh, kind of uh, show the data that is that is um, or map the data that is in that specific data frame. Um, when we're talking about uh, bar plots, uh, there are a couple of other things or a couple of other aesthetics uh, that uh, we can look at uh, and that we can change uh, to achieve a better um, or, or achieve a goal of, you know, comparing different categories and things like that. One uh, useful thing is we can add a fill aesthetic uh, to the bar chart uh, that maps onto an additional variable. So in this case, we're adding the um, uh, variable clarity, so about the clar like information about the clarity of the diamond uh, as the fill aesthetic. And if we do that, essentially what is happening is that the bar plot, it's still the same uh, bar plot, but now each bar is divided into subgroups according to the specific clarity rating. Okay. Um, the default behavior here is that the bars are stacked. So the initial, uh, uh, like ultimately the, the total count is still the same that is displayed or was displayed in the previous plot. Um, and we can um, 
uh, change that default behavior. For example, we can include an option uh, position is equal to fill. If we're more interested in, in comparing proportions in each category across these groups, what happens here is that we're not looking at the bar chart uh, with total counts on the y-axis anymore, uh, but instead we're kind of, um, uh, um, we're putting, um, we're changing all bars to the same size and just look at proportions uh, between categories, okay? And that makes it easier to, for example, uh, compare the proportion of specific groups uh, within each category. Another thing we can do, for example, is uh, rather than stacking the bars, we can place bars next to each other. Uh, and this is by including this argument position equals to dodge. And if we do that, we have a nice little um, histogram or a nice little bar chart where each of the um, uh, categories now has an individual uh, little bar and they're stacked uh, or they're instead of being stacked, uh, they're positioned next to each other. All right, um, so this is all for ggplot for now. We'll have another whole uh, workshop that will be focused more on uh, data visualization sometime later in the semester. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about data transformation using dplyr.